end of harvest 22 and yeah what a relief it will be to have this lot in the shed uh, i've got a couple of fields of linseed left to um left to go um so i'm just waiting to get jump on the, the combine and take my my stint got my cup of tea and um yeah let's try and get this thing in the shed to the last bit of our 2022 harvest it's um, certainly been a bit of an interesting one and uh, we're in the last two fields of linseed at the minute and we'll be pretty glad to be honest once it, once all of this is is finally in the shed um, it's been a bit of a bit of a challenge in harvest to say the least I mean every every year has its own challenges but um, it's been quite a difficult one we've only just posted the the video from April which showed us um, which was when James was preparing the land and, and doing the um, doing the drilling. Um, not long after that, we recorded that video. Sadly, um, James's dad passed away, so it's been a really difficult year for us. And um, you know, James's dad farmed this this farm. Uh, retired about ten years ago, and um, yeah, it's been it's been a huge loss and, and a really sad time. Now we're okay. This is going to keep going off because we've got a sensor that's broken on the chopper, and uh, so we keep standing with the chopper speed low. But it's not because we're not actually chopping anything. It's just uh, something that needs fixing. So I'm sorry that <laughs> that keeps going off. It's really annoying. So yeah, we're still here. We're here and uh, farming away and um, harvest 2022. Well, we planted all beans this year. Um, all beans. So we planted beans and linseed this year. I mean, the, the cropping is basically, if we go back to 2019, that's why we're, the cropping's kind of been weird since then, um, because we had a, that wet weather, we didn't get our winter crop of wheat in, so we ended up growing all break crops. So we, it was break crops, then last year, um, break crops into 2020, last year we grew all wheat on the farm and we made the decision, or James made the decision that, um, with the Ukrainian war and what was going on in, in uh, the world back then and, and still now in the fertilizer prices that it was a bit too much of a risk to grow second wheat where you know you need to throw quite a bit of fertilizer at it. Fertilizer prices were, were and still are quite crazy, uh, just like everything really. Everything's gone up and everything's a bit um, expensive. So we didn't grow any second wheat. So the farm was put in with um, beans and yep, and linseed. Let's go, let's start with the beans. So before harvest, we were talking about uh, you know what what to expect and of course beans we've grown beans before james has grown beans quite a few times i've har i've only been harvesting um or i've only been helping a bit on the farm in the last couple of years and um, we have to stop at each end uh, because of the swath but um i've yeah so i've no i've um i've this is my fourth harvest on the farm so i don't claim to be a farmer because i'm not but i help out here as much as i can and um, more so now and more and more involved um, i've harvested beans once so i only have one one uh, harvest of experience but it was super easy they were probably the easiest crop actually to come that i'd combined so far um, so we were really, you know, yeah, we'll fly through the beans and we thought that the linseed was going to be the biggest problem because it's got a bit of a reputation of being pretty difficult to get off the combine. And yeah, actually the beans were really, really difficult. So first thing we expected the, the harvest to be a late harvest. We thought it was going to be the end of August um, before we were really even starting or at least mid-August. But obviously we had that really hot spell in the UK in July and it just brought the crops forward. You know, the, the, everything was, was maturing and, and ready itself um, in, in early August. So we thought, great, we can, we can get on with it, get on with the beans. And um, James went to the field and the, to set the combine up. Actually, it ended up back on the yard quite a few times trying to set it up. Because we felt that there was a, he felt that there was a, a problem with the the combine because the, these beans were just not going up the combine at all, and they were an absolute pain in the 
ass to combine. It was not enjoyable at all. What was basically happening? So um, you have the header. So anybody that's not familiar with combines and how they work or, or what the bits do. So you have the, the big bit that looks like a hammerhead <laughs> off a shark um, at the front. And it has a, a knife on it that, that does this backwards and forwards, which is what cuts the crop at the bottom. And uh, what was happening was we were going into the beans and it was kind of shaking them rather than really cutting them. So the beans were shaking like that. Then all of the, the beans were basically flying out and hitting, hitting the windscreen and going everywhere. The sails, which are the, the bit that spin, they're black on our combine, uh, they spin and they, they basically there to tap the crop towards, um, you know, to, towards the head out and to, to, to sort of feed, help feed them in. But as the as the, the sails were hitting the top of the beans and they were just exploding, the pods were exploding and the beans were everywhere. And you looked down and there were more beans on the floor than were going in the combine, which is obviously not what you want. So we thought maybe, I mean, we knew that we knew the age of the, the knife. Maybe it needs a new knife. Maybe there's something wrong. Maybe it's the setting. So he tried all kinds of different things. We did speak to some other farmers who seemed to be having similar problems and what it actually turned out to be was it was too hot. I mean, how it can actually be too hot during harvest, I don't know, because that's not something we've experienced before here. Actually, normally you want really hot, dry weather so you can, you can get on. Um, so that was like the start of the beans. Yeah, so it was too hot. So what, what we ended up having to do was go out combining in the morning at like so you have the dew in the morning so we had to wait till the majority of the dew was gone but there was enough moisture in the beans to be able to combine them um, the other thing that they were doing when it was hot was wrapping around the worm so the big metal thing that spins in the middle of the header normally like when your day is done and the, it, the dew's dropped things that start wrapping around the worm and you basically have to stop the beans were, the entire stalks were wrapping around them and getting jammed up. So then you have to basically stop, get off the combine, uh, stop everything, put the sails up, climb inside the, the front part, the header, and dig it all out. And it's not a very pleasant job. You just end up covered in dust. Um, you've got to get all, all of the, you know, all of the stalks of the, the beans out of there and try again. And you could be going up the field and doing that literally three, four, five times in, in uh, one breed, <laughs> which was just a nightmare. And obviously you couldn't take your eyes off the header because if it's, you've got to stop when it's doing that because it's just going to get blocked up and you're going to break something. So yeah, we were having to combine like from eight in the morning till about one o'clock and then it would start doing this again and we'd be losing the beans everywhere and they'd be hitting the, hitting the screen of the combine uh, and then sort of spend the middle of the day kind of twiddling our fingers and doing other jobs um, and then around 6 7 p.m. at night when the dew was starting to drop again we could combine but only for like two or three hours because then after that there was too much dew and you had to stop again so it was just took such a long time because you couldn't really get on whereas like with a wheat crop in the dry weather you know you can start around 9 10 o'clock and be combining until midnight or so depend just depending on you know the conditions and how what the dew's doing and so on and so on so um and i don't yeah i mean i've had one year when we were combining oats when uh we did a lot of what we call bulldozing and bulldozing i think is more common on this combine than uh, some of the other combines and it's basically where um the float, there's like two plates under the header and they determine the height of the header. So they, the combine, you set, make a setting and it tries to keep the, the header at the right height that you've set it to. And so those, those plates hang down and it tells the, the combine how far the header is off the floor. And um, those plates sometimes can start, I think it's the plates actually, I never really double checked, but it's the plates that basically catch little soft bits of dirt especially if you're running the header low and uh, push the dirt forwards and it bunches up onto the edge of the, the header and sometimes you can kind of lift the header up and, and dip it over it and back into the crop and keep going uh, but sometimes you have to stop, turn everything off, get out the combine, dig it all out with your hands, dig the knife out because it gets all jammed in the knife 
uh, get back on the combine, start it all up again, and off you go. It, well, it's just it, it just takes more time, and yeah, it's t it makes it a bit more tiring. But the thing is, is you can't take your eyes off the header because if it does that and you take a load of dirt into the combine, you're going to break something. And for me, because I'm not the you know I'm not the most experienced. I'm, I don't like I said to you, I'm not classing myself as a farmer here. I help out on the farm. I'm kind of learning now. Um, I think the worst possible thing would be for me to have been responsible for a, a breakdown because if this thing stopped, there's a potential that you, you're not going to get to the end of your harvest before the weather breaks. If the weather breaks, you might not get some of your crop in. It, it just creates more stress and of course everything, absolutely everything on these things costs an awful lot of money. So, um, so yeah, the beans, yield wise, I mean, the, the, we had this dry spell in the middle of the year that's uh, across the country has, has given the crops a bit of a hammer in. Um, and the beans, James and I, when coming to, come to it, it's James really. James is pretty happy with the with the outcome of the beans. I mean, probably a little bit better than average, not amazing, not uh, not appalling for what's been spent on them. They didn't look pretty. I'm quite happy. I think we're both quite happy actually to have got them got them combined because they just weren't pretty looking they had quite a lot of weeds in them what James said to me about that was was that Jen if we'd have spent a load of money on all the chem any chemicals to make the crop look prettier the yield wouldn't have been any better so it's completely pointless spending an absolute fortune on them so I didn't do loads and loads of droning because no farmer wants to show you his crops looking not so pretty but what I can say is that what was there was very satisfying. We got the yields. It could have been better, but they always can be better, right? Um, but we got what we uh, what we needed it to, needed it to be for what was spent on it. I think the biggest disappointment for James was, um, and if you watch our last video, you'll know about this. He tore his Achilles tendon in April, um, the time that the beans were drilled, the spring beans were drilled, and there was a bit of a conversation about whether to roll them or not. And obviously, rolling them pushes them into the moisture. <laughs> and uh, they can get away, uh, they can get established perhaps better, but there's also a little bit of a risk with rolling that um, if it rains, it can, this is, I've learned this more recently, that it can get big capped, which so is like, there's like a road of mud over the top of them and they just can't poke through and grow. And we weren't really sure what the weather was gonna do, but also part of the decision not to roll it was because James's leg was in a bit of a mess. And after all the power harrowing with his leg out the door of, of the tractor, it, it, he really needed to rest it. Um, in hindsight, it was the wrong decision. It, they should have been rolled, and perhaps we would have just got that little bit of a better yield if they had if they had, had the, the rollers over them. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Wisdom of fools, as they say. So we... There's a little bit of teamwork between James and I. We share the combine driving. Uh, this year he's opened, I haven't really opened any fields, I haven't opened any fields up actually this year, because it, again, it's about a speed thing. Um, it depends what we're, what we're harvesting. Um, he, it, me driving gives him the opportunity to go and push the corn up, to move the tractors around. I obviously help him move all the machines around. Um, and it just keeps the combine moving. He's coming to see me now, so I'll chat to you in a bit. Where was I? Uh, yeah, we were talking about leads, uh, leads, yields, weren't we? Um, so yeah, beans were yielded not too bad. I think they were a little bit smaller than what they normally are, but again, it's growing conditions. You know, they, we just had all that dry weather in the middle of the year. Actually, overall, it's better than it was better than the year that we were flooded out. But we did have a breakdown as well. Uh, we had a bit of a breakdown in the middle of it all, and this combine, uh, touch wood, has you know has, has been a really good combine. We can't really complain about that at all. But last year, before last harvest, James did a big service on it. Um, it was it was ready for for the you know had quite a lot of money spent on it, had everything it needed. Uh, we did the did the harvest. Actually, I don't think anything went wrong last year. We when he, after he'd stopped uh, harvesting, um, someone locally needed a hand because their their combine had broken down. So it'd been washed off and put in the shed, and uh, you know James off, offered to to go and do their a bit of combining for them 
Unfortunately, there was a rock in one of the fields and it went up the, up the front of the combine, did quite a lot of damage. So that was the end of that. Um, he, did, he said he just didn't see it. He, he managed to catch one uh, and, and get it out of the way. Uh, but this second one, I mean, it was huge. It was, it was, and yeah, it did an awful lot of damage. So they spent, you know, spent another load of money he spent on, uh, on repairing it. So the, the stone had gone behind, through behind the worm and then there's like a, a section like this um, and it's got four chains uh, so yeah there's like there's four chains and they have like bars between them um, that, that, that are between the four chains and they um, basically it's, a, it's called the feeder so the, they feed the crop in to where the drum's sp spinning I'm sure there's way more technical stuff to, to talk about in there but that's basically what it is and the rock had managed to get itself wedged right the way down there so yeah, it's not it's not really ideal is it and it bent quite a few things so the chains only need changing about every 10 years um, they were brand new chains that had been put on after that big service that he did for last season and he said that they'd taken them off had a look at them and they looked okay so um, they were put back on we were probably three quarters of the way through the bean harvest and uh, actually that day I was a little bit later to the field got on the combine with James we went up and down once and started making this horrendous noise so it's like as soon as that happens you, you shut everything down drove, kind of drove it back and worry about what it might be I think the worst case scenario would have at that point really would have been if one of the chains had snapped because obviously they can if it snaps it can end up in the drum and that can do like a lot of damage but, well, it went back to the, the yard, got the header trailer, we took the header off. I'm not technical and I don't, I, to be honest, I hadn't really ever looked in the front of the combine in that, any great detail. And you can see, I, I think I've got a little bit of video of it, so hopefully I can show you, but you can see that the, these bars that link between the, the chains, it wasn't straight and um, it was kind of on an angle like that. And I was like, I'm sure that's not how it's meant to be because why would it be like that? Surely it'd be straight. Um, there was quite a lot of head stretching going on because there was nothing really obvious, nothing was broken. But when you looked inside, one of the chains, to me, I mean, I, I ride dirt bikes and stuff, so I know a little bit about uh, mechanical things. To me, it looked like one of the chains was longer than the others, but we didn't really know. And uh, so it was a case of bringing the, bringing the combine back to the yard and we, we called them. Um, one of James's friends who, who's awesome on the engineering side, really good at fixing stuff. It was a Sunday, as it always is, so um, there wasn't going to be anyone at the local dealership to help us. And it was a really nice hot day, so it's like, it's a, when it comes to breakdowns, it's like a worst case scenario. I mean, apart from fire, uh, I think breakdowns at harvest are one of the most stressful things because like I mentioned before, if the, if the combine stops, then you're losing time and losing money. So we got it back to the yard and um, our friend Mount came and uh, actually Mount was really cool. He was, he was explaining it all to me in quite a lot of detail, like how, how it all works. And yeah, he confirmed that, that there was clearly something not right with the, the way everything was lined up. So either it, it had slipped or it stretched and it's probably relating to what happened at the end of last year. So those chains will need replacing. Um, Malk and James basically tightened them up as much as they could, a little bit of a risk in itself, um, to get us back combining. And we were back out that evening and actually we only really lost that hot part of the day. So it wasn't, it wasn't too much of a drama. Um, and we could we could get get back out combining, but the the stress levels were certainly pretty. It was a little bit worrying on that day, and I was I was very, you know, I'm just trying to, to help as much as I can, and and but I you know I'm not I'm no mechanic, and so I was really happy when Mal turned up on a Sunday, um, and and gave us a hand, and uh, we could have a cup of tea with him, and then get ourselves back back out and um, keep our fingers crossed for the remainder of harvest. So once the beans were done, uh, which was a relief. Um, then it was linseed and to be honest everyone I've mentioned harvesting linseed to, every, all the other half farmers we know have kind of gone you'll have a load of fun with that. Haha <laughs> linseed, Ooh, yeah never again or whatever they've said. Um, so I already had a little bit of preconception of what linseed was going to be like and after the the beans it was like 
not really looking forward to that. I'm not really enjoying this. I normally really enjoy driving the combine, but um, anyway, so the first field of linseed. Um, firstly, James wanted to try chopping the straw because that would just be better all around, but that was definitely not happening. Um, and he got about 100 meters up the field with the combine and it was blocked. I sort of tentatively drove up in the pickup to offer a little bit of help behind him and uh, I was pulling it out, he was shoving it down and um, I told him that I probably should just go on holiday for a week because I'm not going to enjoy this, you know, especially when you look around and there's linseed everywhere ready to be combined. But actually that was the worst bit, it was by some trees so we just think that maybe that was a little bit damper than the rest of the field because to be honest. Well, James has said to us that this has been the best linseed he's ever harvested, and we've, we've, um, we grew two different varieties. The first variety was good, did not yield very well. The yield was disappointing, actually, but it harvested, you know, it really wasn't too bad from a harvest point of view. So then we were chatting and saying, like, obviously, with the first variety being quite good, then probably the, sec the, the, the last couple of fields that are a different variety, um, probably they're going to be a nightmare but actually I'm in that now and because we were supposed to grow a variety called bingo um, but the people we bought the people that uh, James buys the seed off the, there was some problem and we didn't end up with what he actually wanted but maybe that was a blessing in disguise because this has actually been pretty easy to, to harvest um, and here this part of the farm is actually yielding a lot better uh, the first yeah the, the, the first lot you know is probably 50% of what we'd actually anticipated so that was really that it has been disappointing it's also been really difficult for us to um, for James to get the combine set to make a good sample so yeah he's not he's not been happy with the sample and um, you know we keep having to get and get out and just check if it's throwing it over the back so there seems to be a real compromise between the two and all the stuff that I've filmed is actually not the not I mean I'm gonna play the trick here all the stuff that I filmed isn't actually the the good stuff let's say it isn't actually the better linseed that we're in because the, this has been the last couple of days of harvest and to be honest we just want to get on with it and get it in the shed and not have me faffing around with cameras and drones and stuff so um, this stuff is a little bit better hopefully this will bring up the averages a little bit because the the, the other part of the farm that we combined was was you know and you're going like 8k through it um, you know that probably there's a reason behind that and again we had we did have quite a lot of bulldozing moments but it wasn't wrapping around the worm or doing anything daft so this variety is weird though because it's really green underneath so we actually didn't think it was ready but it's going up the combo line absolutely fine and like I said we'll hopefully get this harvest completed in the next day or two I'm saying that now and it looks like it's just wrapping around the worm a little bit um, we'll hopefully get this combine completed in the next day or two and um, then we'll be massively into, you know, faced with the farm that needs all the land work doing um, and all those jobs that you said you were going to do after harvest, they're all waiting for us now. But I, um, you know, I love it. I'm really passionate about it and I really hope that um, I can help a little bit more now that I've got a bit more free time because that I've, um, you know, changed the way that I'm, I'm working. I'm not working off farm as full time as I, as I was and uh, yeah it will be all week next year so it's going to be a big year. Thank you guys for watching and I keep saying I'm going to do more videos but this year obviously with what happened you know with James's dad we uh, we just want to make him proud and we want to do the farm justice yeah and we want to feel that that we've really yeah we made, we've made him proud and um, that's our main intention now, is to just do a good job and make James's dad proud. Up from up there, eh? I hope you've enjoyed our little harvest update. You know, and uh, we enjoy making the videos. If you like, a, you know, if you like our content, I'm going to try and keep keep making a few videos like we were before. Um, so maybe give us a like and a subscribe, and then you can see when uh, when the next one's up. Yeah. It's been pretty cool to talk to you guys from the combine. I've really enjoyed it. We do this video thing just for fun because I really like um, documenting what we do because like in two years time when we look back, we can be like, oh yeah, that harvest, that was a nightmare. Like I said, we like documenting what we're up to. Well, I'd probably do more than James does, but um, so I'm going to go and empty the tank now and uh, I'm going to call it a day on you guys. I'm going to carry on combining and hopefully we'll get this 
get this done. Thank you.